Hey, what's up guys, Aaron here, and welcome back to my Let's Talk F1 series for the 2019 F1 car launches. And one of the last cars to launch this year was the Ferrari 2019 Challenger with Sebastian Vettel and Charles Leclerc at the wheel, the SF90. And here it is in all its matte finish glory, actually. The first Ferrari in, uh, in ever, I think, that has a matte paint finish there, like the Red Bull cars, basically. And a very nice red and black color scheme. I really like it, actually. In certain lights, the blacks look a little bit more gray, which looks a little bit odd, but in proper lighting, the, the black on red matte finish, I really, really do uh, like it quite a fair bit, and it looks like quite a tasty Ferrari car, but very much an evolution of last year, and not a revolution, those are the words of the uh, new team principal, and you can see that very clearly, visually speaking, uh, fr uh, from, from the outside point. I think a lot has changed on the interior, the inside of the engine packaging, and whatnot, but from the aerodynamic standpoint, it is a very uh, similar looking car to last last year and there's a few just different changes to obviously meet the 2019 regulations but a lot of it is very similar to what they ended up with last year but let's look through it then aerodynamically and uh, see what's what on this new Ferrari car. So we've got a very uh, blown out uh, brightened up image there uh, so uh, the, the top of the kind of image is a little bit blurry but uh, to try and get the detailings of this Ferrari have to try and uh, get as much exposure as we can. So we start off then with the front end nothing new here on the nose cone per se in terms of these uh, uh, cuts through the slot gap clock uh, cuts on the either side of the actual nose ridge themselves. Ferrari had that from last year, trying to cut some drag and allow air to pass straight through. You've got the S duct entry, and that is the S duct right there on top. That is nearly as wide as the entire chassis side thing of the Ferrari car, and uh, very much the, the same sort of outlet that Ferrari ran for the last couple of years. The turning veins, nothing new there. The, the, the same sort of turning veins right underneath the suspension arms there. A bit, a bit more of a linkage, I guess you could say, a bit of a flaw on the turning veins themselves on that. That. On the front wing itself, the Ferrari front wing is actually quite aggressive in terms of the way the curvature of the flaps are. It really swoops and uh, curls through. They've really tried to flatten out the flaps at the very outside when it meets the end plates, and they've really curled them and try to sculpt them as much as they can to the inside face to get, to get as much effect as they can on the inside face uh, as the air passes through uh, over the front wing and under the front wing as it goes towards uh, the uh, barge wall area of the car. But they try to flatten out, and actually they're the only team so far that I've seen the end plates also trying to do something a little bit clever. They've actually got a bit of a, a, a shortening of the height of the end plate on the uh, trailing edge compared to the leading edge. So maybe trying to diffuse a little bit of the air and stop as much effect going on and trying to clean up as much airflow on the outside so it doesn't get affected. Uh, it doesn't affect the inside flow essentially perhaps in that kind of way. But as we move to the inside face of the Ferrari car then the barge wood area, the end plate area, the side pod, the same very similar inlets to last year. Very very high up and narrow inlets, very, very small inlets indeed. You've got the same overhanging wing that comes uh, from the upright across and actually dips in and then connects to the chassis front. You can't really see it because it gets blocked off by the mirror there, but a little bit of a dip to it. So it kind of cuts in and creates a bit of a vortex generator uh, in itself uh, for where the inlet is. So Ferrari always, you know, since last year have gone with this uh, concept of very tiny inlets, but then the way they make sure enough air is getting into these inlets is with all the wings and appendages just ahead of it as well. They've got the two uh, pronged attachment mirror approach as many teams have. The main one being right here to, uh, connected to the chassis and then another upright that simply connects to actually the overhang wing instead of the actual bodywork itself. It connects to the actual overhang wing which is interesting to say the least. But then moving further down an evolution of what they had last year with the actual barge board side pod elements to the side pod but of course meeting the uh, new 2019 regulations they can't have anything going on in this kind of height of the car so they certainly chop them off and then they've got an extra uh, little part that connects on in uh, black carbon fiber that connects down to the actual floor of the barge wall faces then the barge walls themselves uh, an evolution of last year very much nothing new going on in terms of all the slot gaps the cuts trying to cut some drag and also a funnel air through to the side and the bottom of the car but from the side profile they ha have actually done it, uh, something a little bit interesting in terms of the extra bit of barge wall that are allowed because the regulations allow the barge walls to go a few more millimeters for Forward. So they've actually got some new designs on that side. So we'll get to that on the side profile there. As we move on to the top of the car, they've got a, this is probably the biggest change on, in all honesty on this car, is the much skinnier uh, inlet for the engine uh, cover itself, for the engine intake there. So uh, they clearly have done a lot of work on the engine packaging. They've said themselves in the press conference uh, whilst they were uh, presenting the car, they've done a lot of work on the interior of this car, the packaging of the, uh, the engine to make it a bit more efficient 
and get the cooling a little bit better. And so you can see they don't need such a large intake now for that cooling. And they've been able to really tighten up the rear end. So that's one thing I'll give them. It is even tighter at the rear end there. The Coke bottle shape is really quite nice on the Ferrari car. Then you can see actually by the size of the carbon fiber fin they've got on the engine cover, how tiny they've got this engine package through. Because most teams don't have this much carbon fiber bodywork and this fin going on. It almost, you know, they've got it su such a small engine cover and this looks so large in comparison now that it almost looks like back to the 2017 shark fin style, uh, shark fin, well, a big shark fin face in a way because they've got so much of this fin going on there. So that's how suckered down they've got this engine packaged in and they've got this very interesting kind of double layer fin that kind of has a bit of a bulge here but I suspect that's maybe just more packaging rather than anything clever. On the rear end they've got a uh, massive T wing, a, a kind of circular oval T wing that they had back from 2017 if you remember that was a very popular style and shape. Uh, um, I think most probably McLaren ran a T wing like this in 2017. Obviously 2018 there was a kind of band on the very top because there was no more shark fin to go there but it seems now this year in 2019 seems to be a trend to have these T wings just ahead uh, on top of the exhaust uh, actual exit and Ferrari going with the two uh, cat arm approach to the, the attachment of the rear wing in black and then they've got the two waste gates on top of the exhaust obviously they had that and then uh, Haas and Alfa Romeo followed suit uh, we look onto the actual floor of the car like I mentioned in a lot of uh, previous videos of car launches this will be a big area of development for the car the floors Ferrari are the first ones to really start to innovate in this area with slot gaps in the floor uh, as it, uh, as by Jean Grand Prix last year and so uh, again they come through with four slots on the floor and uh, I'm sure that will try and uh, change and develop as the season goes on and then towards the end the rear wing they've got the two uh, three actually little strakes here to try and flick up some air upwards and try and carry a bit of upwash and uh, a downwash difference of the rear wing and then the usual uh, overhangs that Ferrari copied from McLaren last year remain on the car and they've uh, continued to have that quite aggressively there and then with two little slot gaps at the very front leading edge of the rear wing bleeding air down towards the diffuse area trying to get that air working as efficiently as possible down in that region but uh, you can clearly see uh, you know with a few little bits and bobs that are new on the car but a lot of it very much is an extreme evolution as the team principal explained they, they went for it's not a revolution but it is an evolution that they've tried to go to extremes with parts of the car that they can go to and as extreme as they can basically on this car because remember this car was very very solid last year it just mu it just missed a few tricks compared to the Mercedes car in a few different circuits and also in terms of strategy and you know the, the making the most of it that was really a lot of Ferrari's downfall last year so uh, they didn't really need to go for a big revolution if they did they probably would have mucked things up to be honest if we look at a side portion of the car then this is when you can really see maybe some changes to the barge wood area you can see here now last year the barge wards ended around here I would say and so this entire bit is entirely new and thanks to the new regulations having the barge wards move forward and again uh, I, pretty much every team barring McLaren have not really used this new regulation to the, its full length like the Ferrari have really gone all the way to the suspension arm to have this barge wood piece here and McLaren are the only other team I've seen so far on launch that are utilizing this new space of regulation they're allowed so it kind of baffles me in a way why why they don't I guess obviously doesn't fit into their philosophy perhaps or they're waiting for upgrade parts in pre-season and as they start the season but Ferrari the only team so far to have launched with you know utilizing this new area they're allowed to exploit so the barge wood's going uh, in a new kind of shape all the way to the front there swooping up upwards with a two, uh, you can't actually see it from this angle obviously, it's hard to tell from a kind of 2D perspective, but actually two layered barge wards at the front there with a, a few different angles going on and then attaching to the chassis at the very front there just before the suspension arms there, but the rest of it very much an, uh, an evolution of last year in terms of all the slot gaps, they got the dagger arrangement on the floor, like I said this is pretty much just a, the same as last year but chopped off to meet the 2019 regulations, you can see the undercut they've gone on because this is pretty much where the inlet floor is so a big nice juicy under, undercut on the Ferrari car and then like I said tapered in with a very nice coke bottle shape and you can see this is what I mean look at how much carbon fiber uh, uh, fin basically they've got here to try and go up to the maximum the regulations will allow because that is how much they've done in terms of suckering in this engine there the uh, the T-wing again is on show there that U, uh, the kind of oval U-shaped uh, T-wing and then again on the rear end the finer details of that sculpted rear wing on the Ferrari car there and then on the front like I said, just showing you off that profile of the uh, trailing edge of the end plates of the front wing is short.
shorter than the leading edge there. So trying to maybe just do something a little bit clever just to try and maybe, you know, because air will just basically jot over this face having been taken across by this height. So maybe trying to just encourage air to just swim, uh, simply sweep across from one side to the other due to the pressure difference and trying to get the air away a little bit from the main plane and the inside face of the front wing. And then finally, we look at the front-facing view. Like I said, and mentioned a very highly sculpted front wing for Ferrari, even with the simple regulations now for 2019. You can see how straightened up that flap is here. And then it really dramatically curls and curves in as it goes to the main part of its flap. So they're trying to, almost like Alfa, if you saw the video yesterday with Alfa Romeo, where they basically didn't have anything here. They're trying to get it as straight as possible, basically. So it's just a uniform kind of wing. And then they're trying to affect as much as they can to the inside face. We move on then uh, to the bargewood area. You can see from this angle here how intricate the bargewood and aggressive the bargewood area is for Ferrari, very much like the, the Mercedes and, and Red Bull ally kind of. And you can see the difference between them and the midfield teams of how complex this area of the car has uh, become. And you can see a nice kind of uh, flattened off top edge here for the new bargewood elements they've got on that backside there. And so just trying to maybe uh, carry the air across to the downstream of the car. Here Here's the S-Stock just above, very faint, and then the two new pieces of barge wall. This is the most forward-facing one, and you can see the double-decker arrangement there. And then for the inlet themselves, you can see how small the inlet is, but you can see the very different compartments they've essentially been able to make with the winglets coming across as well. So you've got one, two, and three different compartments of the inlets. And so on the inlets themselves, we saw last year, they actually had physical different compartments that were letting in air to different parts of the, the engine bay. And so Ferrari being very clever with the way they packaged their engine from last year to this year as well. Uh, you can see in terms of the suckering in of their side pod in terms of the undercut, it is quite a, a tiny inlet and a tiny side pod, but actually compared to the Red Bull car, they haven't gone as shrink wrapped as they could have perhaps gone. So Ferrari leaving a little bit of room there, but of course, because they're having to, you know, uh, make up for how tiny the engine cover is and how tiny is the rear end, I guess, they had to kind of move a little bit more of the cooling maybe towards the front end there and directly get some cooling done right at the start of the side pod itself. But uh, you can see this entire arrangement very much is like last year. I mean, there's not a lot different. It might be some subtle shapes different, but pretty much they've gone for the approach. If it's not broke, don't fix it pretty much. And then that tiny inlet, that's the major change at the top of the car with the engine cover there, the very small inlet compared to the huge kind of uh, more oval-like shape from last year. So that has been the Ferrari SF9. So in the words of the team principal, not a revolution, but an aggressive uh, and going to extremes as much as they can uh, from the kind of 2018 car base to the 2019 car. Guys, let me know what you think of the livery itself. Visually speaking, I really like, like I said, I really like it. And let me know what you're thinking about the actual car itself, aerodynamically speaking. You know, Ferrari fans out there, are you confident this car could still be uh, the challenger to Mercedes this year? Or I don't know, because I have a feeling Ferrari are hiding a few little things that they are not showing the full car yet. I think they have some things to come at preseason testing and then Australia because this very this this really looks like almost like last year's car with just the regulations kind of met and obviously the engine cover uh, inlet chain so I would suspect there is more to come from this car and more aggressive bits to come uh, in the coming kind of you know opening pre-season tests and then the, the opening part of the season but guys if you have enjoyed the video be sure to hit that like button let me know what you thought in the comments below if you aren't new around here to subscribe for weekly for all on content I've been Aaron for hope you enjoyed today I'll see you guys next time goodbye